He flashes his high beam. Where's Alcon today? Who's my grandmother about her experience with immigration? What country are you originally from, Boston? And what year did you come over? 1938. And what age? Six. Six. Uh, why did you decide to come over to America? Because the Nazis took us over, threw us out of our apartment, put my father in concentration camp. And my grandmother and my mother and I, we went to Holland and then to the United States. Um, how did you arrive from the United States? I know you came over from uh, to Holland through a uh, boat. How did you get to the United States from there? <coughs> from Holland. Boat. Boat. <laughs> um, Holland, American line. <laughs> Where did you first settle when you first came to America? America, Long Island, and it was, that was a visit, and then we settled in New Rochelle, New York. Is that where you stayed for the, for uh, the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. All right. No. <laughs> where did you not settle? Until 1953. Yeah. Um, what were your expectations when you came to America, you personally? I came for the jazz. <laughs> <But anybody else. laughs> and uh, what were the expectations for your, your grandmother and your mother? Well, my mother was sad because she had to leave her husband, but my grandmother had relatives here anyway. And they were going to come in 1927, but they were talked out of it. Had they come, it would have been different. Um, in what ways did America live up to expectations? Like, did you come over thinking uh, that it would be a better life? Or it wouldn't be a better life because we were very rich. So we had to start from the bottom. But it, it was good because, you know, I met it. Actually, it's better it went this way because... I learned a lot more, made a lot of friends, and I think kids learn, learn quicker. You know, you get to school, and I, I knew English anyhow, because they always taught me English. Yeah. Um, how did having to leave your home and everything that was familiar to you make you feel? I really didn't realize. I mean, it was like an adventure you didn't even know. I mean, you're six years old. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you find it hard uh, to assimilate to American life? No. No, no, no. I don't think kids do. And the kids here, they were very, very good to me and, and, and learned real quick. It's good. Except for the weather. You get sinuses. I got out of school a lot because of that sinuses. Um, in what ways do you feel that you were treated differently, if any, uh, because you were in okay, the clothes? The clothes. The clothes. <laughs> my mother made me wear high heels, high tied shoes because my feet were flat and, and people would laugh at me. And I always wanted to wear sandals. Other than that, fine, no problem. Um, are you glad that you came over? Oh yeah, I'm glad. I think about it though. I mean, how how would it have been? I would have started school there. I even bought the um, the backpack and everything, the leather backpack. I was ready to start school when I left, which I still have that backpack. And why? Home different than it was in Austria. A lot smaller. I didn't have a room of my own. I had to sleep with my grandmother, and it was a, a two-bedroom, but, you know, before I had my own room and everything different that way. And I was kind of ashamed of it, you know, because everybody had more than I did. Because, you know, you started out. But I say in the long run, it's probably better, because you learn more that way. Okay. I'm a citizen. Well, oh, I had to, it's like a driver's license. You had to read the book. I think it was in the eighth grade, and I think we went to New York, my grandmother and I, because I was on their passport. And um, I don't know what citizenship I had, probably Austrian. So anyhow, then I just took the test, and I stood there, and they asked me the questions, and raised the hand, and what was the citizen. What was the question like that they were? I don't really remember. I think, you know, mostly like the United States, you know, presidents or states. Or, and it wouldn't have been too hard because I was in the eighth grade, so they wouldn't have made it too hard. Mm -hmm. Just so that I answered something that I knew about the country, I guess, right? Would you have to, like, pledge an oath to, like, this? Yeah, 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 you got to pledge allegiance. Yeah. To the flag and all that. Okay. <laughs> um, had the fact that you're a naturalized citizen made your life, like, any different now? Well, it does now because if you want to go to Canada, I can't go on my birth certificate. I have to bring the naturalization papers, which are very difficult. And you can't make copies of anything. And if you want to be in Vermont and you want to go to Montreal, it's very difficult. They'll say, where are you from? Say, New Haven? It's okay. They say, where you born? They say, Vienna, and you've got to produce papers, which you might not have because you want to go shopping. I know. <laughs> got a couple. America, you to work from the bottom up. Uh, how did you 
your parents, how did your family make money? Well, believe it or not, uh, they had a, a group of people in New York, and they took my mother in, and people who had never worked before, and they gave them sort of like crafts, and she ended up making placemats, and she's a good artist, and that's how she ended up with my father making these table mats, because during the war, linens and things, <laughs> things were um, in small supply, but the plastic you could the, the maids were gone, so people would have these beautiful linens that she would make them out of woven plastic called sexons. And my father came and he helped her with that. But actually, he went to Danbury Hat and he went from Nurshell to Danbury every morning on the Merritt, four o'clock in the morning, to go to the factory, which is a real come down when you own five shops, you know. <laughs> Do you find uh, your parents or your family resentful that they had to work from the bottom up and had to work like, so much harder? Well, they never said it. It was just a matter of um, surviving, you know. They really didn't have time to do anything. You just had to be able to survive that. And they had people here that they met socially, you know. They were, they were always okay because it was the same people that came over. But the people from Germany could bring money when they got out. We couldn't bring money. We could bring household goods and ourselves. So that was the difference. So the ones that came from Germany who were there in their show, you know, were better off than we were. I sort of resented that. But hey, I don't care. I had a good life. I really, I can't resent it because your show was fantastic at that time. It's beautiful. All right. What you did on the train and the boat from uh, Austria to uh, Holland and from Holland to America, how was that? Okay. Well, I think it was nighttime because I remember I was looking out the window and there was a big hotel on fire. Couldn't really see anything. And I wasn't really sure where we were going, but we ended up in Holland at, at some relatives. Uh, people work for the Holland American Line. He's a ship captain. And I think he was the one, one of the ones that had the boat going off, boat ship going over. And uh, we stayed in Holland. Holland was great. It was so clean. It was beautiful. It had a really nice time. And then we, next thing I knew, we were on this ship, and the thing was rolling, and I was sick. And my mother was fine, too, having orange juice, and I kept telling, tell the captain to stop the ship, because I want to jet off. It was wrong. It's the channel. I think it was the channel going to England. It stopped at England somewhere, and then it went on to the United States. I sort of remember getting off it, but I'm not sure. And then... The, the relatives came and took us home. And it was 1938, it was the hurricane, and we were in Merrick, and uh, all I remember is being in the basement. I still have the candle holders, man. I gave the candle holders of that great hurricane. It was a terrible hurricane, actually. And that was our trip. And then we went to New Rochelle, because my, uh, my, bro my mother's brother was the manager of the, of the apartment house, so he got us the apartment. And that's where we stayed. Right. I'd become a citizen there, would you? No, I wouldn't. And why? Because I'd have nothing to relate to. It would just be going to see scenery. That's it. There's no people left. There's no one to see. And I think people is what makes it all up. You know, your world, your life. Right. And they're here. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I think that's a good ending. Thank you very much, Omid. Oh, my gorgeous. <laughs> Raised it in a playpen. Can you believe this? <laughs> I'm just going to keep this rolling. Hmm? I'm more of a, do you have an, more of an appreciation for what the, America stands for like than, than, than an everyday citizen might? Yeah, that's a good thing. Like, do you have more of an appreciation that, of like the freedoms available here? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm not keeping that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs>